Paul. Yeah, sure. Just some uh, brief questions on um, aircraft noise, and I've got some questions from the uh, concerned residents of, of um, Brisbane here to ask on their behalf. Uh, the questions, I think I can probably do this preamble while people are coming to the table. The questions relate to the uh, National Airport Safeguarding Framework, in particular um, uh, as a document released in 2016. Uh, this, um, this document refers to uh, some of the flaws in the Australian noise exposure forecast approach. And I may not read out this entire quote from that document, but in part, apparently guideline A of that document says that, uh, this is the Commonwealth Government released this report, says that experience has shown a range of problems with relying solely on the ANEF, that's the Australian Noise Exposure Forecast, as a noise information tool, as there are limits, limitations in using the ANEF to describe aircraft noise exposure to lay people. Um, uh, it goes on with a bit more detail, and I'll finish with some people living outside the 20 ANEF contour have been given an expectation of receiving little or indeed no aircraft noise. As a consequence, find the level of noise actually experience, to be actually experienced to be unacceptable. And the report goes on to say land use planning could be improved through recognition that aircraft noise does not suddenly, suddenly stop at the 20 ANEF contour. Now, I suppose, first of all, does that all make sense to you? Not an expert in this field. Yes, Senator. That does. Thank you. Um, the members of the community here are concerned that uh, that the the planning around the Brisbane Airport second runway used the ANEF despite these flaws that were identified by the government in, or the, sorry the department in 2016. Um, has the department adequately taken into account these flaws when it's uh, and, and or Air Services Australia when it's assessed the second runway proposal? Uh, so, a fair bit to that. The, um, the ANEF is still the um, required mechanism for airports when they're de developing their master plans and renewing their, uh, their master plans to provide um, information on noise outcomes, and that's the ANF is more designed to be a land planning tool to advise you know, local governments around incompatible developments around airports, more so than a mechanism that describes exactly to the community the noise that they might encounter. There's certainly a move to also include noise above contours when we're looking at um, noise impacts. So. And I'm far from an expert in this area, and, and Air Services may be able to help you a little bit more, but um, certainly when, um, and certainly in the Melbourne um, example where we're now moving into the, uh, the third runway there, there's, there's the ANEF, as I said, more of a sort of uh, provision for the, the, the local government and, and state government, noise above contours, which will give more of an indication of those areas where there will be noise impacts. Um, and certainly there is a little bit of... People will look at flight paths on a map and where the line's not going directly over the house, they can sometimes make the assumption well, that means I'm not going to have any noise, but obviously noise doesn't directly come down, it spreads out a little, so there is more work to do to educate and, and, and consult with communities on what those impacts may be as you move further out from the airport. OK. Um, you mentioned there that... Uh that um, the ANEF is more of a land use planning tool, but that this document, as I say, now seven odd years old, said that land using, use planning could be improved through recognition that aircraft noise does not suddenly stop at the 20 ANEF contour. So ha has that, I'm not sure if it was a formal recommendation, but has that advice been implemented in land use planning uh, across Australia? Uh, so it hasn't the mechanism or the requirements under the Airports Act for the airports when they develop their master plan hasn't changed. It's still the ANEF. Um, as I say, as we we're having, they we have been rare, but we're having a, a series of, of new uh, aviation infrastructure, new runways, new airport, uh, where the advice of the communities is more based on these noise above contours. So uh, trying to move away from the ANEF when we're talking to communities and looking at flight paths and considering what the impacts of noise might be on those communities. But the actual legislation hasn't changed around what's required by the airports. 
Right, so when Brisbane did its master plan. Sorry? Sorry, did you need? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Is there something was, else? I was just, sorry, Senator. I was just making reference um, to the National Air Pilot Safeguarding Framework and the guidelines that are attached to that uh, because guideline A refers to specific noise requirements that um, state and territories should take into account in their land planning activities. So there's also an additional framework that applies to states, territories and local councils. Yeah, I think that's the document I'm quoting from. Uh, as I say, I'm not, not across it all myself. Uh, OK, OK. Um, but when Brisbane did its master plan, did it simply just use the... For the second runway, did it just simply use the ANEF? So the major development plan for the runway in Brisbane was done back in 2006, 2007 it was approved. So it was um, a fair way back in history. Sure. Um, as master plans, they've, they've, uh, I can't remember the last time, I think it was about 2019, Brisbane Airport did a master plan. That still would have used the ANEF. But certainly for when they did the major development plan for their new runway, it predated uh, the, the language in that guideline. Right, OK. Um, but there was then a significant delay in the e execution of that master plan. I remember all the controversy. Not sure when the second runway started construction, but because you published this in 2016, I, I, I suppose I'm interested to know when did you let your minister know, or brief your minister either back then or, or now since the election, about deficiencies in the use of the ANEF? So the National Airport Safeguarding Framework is something that was developed by state and territory and Commonwealth governments and actually went through the... It's, what do we call now? It used to be other things. Tick. Um, it went through that mechanism. Uh, so it was agreed between state and territory infrastructure ministers, so obviously the Commonwealth... When was that, sorry? When, sorry? When was that? Uh, well, that well, the actual framework was first developed in about 2013. That, right. that my guideline was probably updated subsequent to that. I haven't okay. got that guideline A last update right in front of me. But um, certainly, as the framework was developed, it's a product of the state and territory infrastructure minister uh, and planning ministers council rather than um, a Commonwealth document as such. Okay. Um uh, uh, have you have you briefed Minister King about these issues that of some flaws in the use of ANEF contours? Uh, I'm not sure that we've done a specific briefing around that. The minister would have exposure to both the NASDAQ guidelines, but also, as I say, there is development of new runways and a new airport where we're engaging more on the issues of noise impacts on communities. So we certainly are going beyond what's in an ANF when we're looking at the advice we'll be providing to ministers on the likely noise impacts as flight paths are being designed and so forth. Could you just take on notice if you have a brief the minister on that particular issue? Certainly. And, and I, I, I'm... I'm Hearing from you that when you provide advice about, say, master plans or new airports, you are you are factoring in a number of different issues, or I suppose metrics, if I want of a better word. But you did mention that the legislation still is based around the ANEF. So is that legislation outdated and not in tune with uh, the, the advice there in Guideline A? Um. Again, it's, it's, it's really context, because the, the master plans which the airports are required to, or well, the major airports every five <coughs> years, the, uh, some of the other airports every eight years, are really around land planning and really providing, um, trying to provide forecasts of where noise is going to impact off airport. It'll say more for the, um, for the, the, the local councils and, and when they're considering their developments. I'm sure you could argue that there may be better ways, that is the Australian standard at the moment. Air Services has a role in reviewing and agreeing that the uh, ANFs that are developed by the airports are correct. Um, it would be 
uh, you would need to do some policy work to determine whether there was a better way uh, and, and, to, and be, to be updating the legislation. Is this an issue that would be covered by the aviation white paper process? Could be. Yes, Senator, we do okay. expect to look at these issues in the aviation white paper process. So, so I presume the submission, there's a submission process associated with that? Yes. So concerned residents, that they, that these people obviously have done a lot of research on this issue and have got some personal experience of it, so they, they could make that submission through that process? Yes, we've already, yes, we've certainly received submissions on this issue, Senator, okay. through the green paper okay. process. Great. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you.